Hello and welcome to Weekly MTG, the news show that comes straight to you from Wizards of the Coast. I am your only host this week, Blake Rasmussen. Steve's out this week. No. Uh, but we've got more than enough personality to fill Steve's shoes this I'll week. I'll be twice as loud as Steve. <laughs> That's <laughs> he, he will definitely do that. Mark Rosewater is here, uh, and we are going to spend the entire show just talking Throne of Eldraine. Uh, Mark said he could talk him. forever about this. We're going to limit it to about an hour. Okay. But uh, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go through. We've got a bunch of cards that yep. Mark has stories about. We're going to share some stories. We're going to answer yep. your questions, so put them in chat. I'm going to be watching. And then uh, that's it. That's the show, and it's, right. it's going to be fun. We're going <laughs> to talk to you all about some of the design of the cards yep. and that sort of deal. But first, we're going to do the news. Steve usually does this, okay. but uh, I'm going to do it this week. And there's only one thing I want to talk about, and that is the launch of Arena and the pretty cool commercial that we put up today for Arena. Yes. So let's run that. Oh, yes. I've got five attackers. You got no blockers. And you're dead. You need to train. I don't need to train. Maybe not. But you do need a training montage. To win in the arena, you have to be the arena. Okay. You must sharpen your skills. Here, eat this. That's a cauliflower. It's a superfood. All right, come on, pop them, keep those knees going. Oh, you punch like a bee bullet. Now that we've covered spells, let's talk about flying. I'm doing it wrong! Do you need me There's no way to run Rise and shine. It's magic time. Fire! And fire! Done. Sophia, don't you quit on me. Sophia, the magic was inside you all along. Uh, what are you doing? Nothing. Whoa, nice combo. Have you been training? A little. If you love a challenge, you love Magic the Gathering Arena. Welcome to the challenge. Download free. A little bit about something? Yeah, so <laughs> Mark was telling me while we were watching that that you actually worked on the blackboard that's yes, in yes. there, right? Yeah. So in, in this, in the long version of this, um, yeah, he's teaching her and there's a blackboard that has information on it. So they asked us, they asked a bunch of people in R&D, we went down in a room, we spent like an hour or two mm -hmm. hours, and we wrote stuff down, and then they took pictures of stuff and they, they, they put it together. But yeah. that blackboard is filled with all sorts of jokes. Can many you give, of us which, an, give us an example of one. Many of which are in my handwriting. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's uh, there's the gruel saying that's done uh, like um, it's a proof, so it's done in proof form. Okay. Uh, there's like uh, Maro's checklist of things uh, that I have to do. Yeah. Um, a whole bunch of that is written in my handwriting, by the way, because we would literally wrote it on the board. And they took pictures of it, okay. so a lot of that's in my handwriting. The other thing was when we had done that, because that was a while ago. Mm -hmm. H was supposed to be handball, and I was supposed to be ice hockey. But then people were getting confused between ice ho hockey being ice hockey, not hockey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we changed it. So now H is hockey and I is ice skating. You're talking about the code words. The, for the those code up, words. Yeah. I put I put some advanced code words on the board. Yeah. Because uh, the audience didn't know them yet. 
Uh, but anyway, so if you like Easter eggs, there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs in that thing. Yeah, just go back um, and pause it and. But especially the the, the, the blackboard. There's probably a hundred jokes on that blackboard. So. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that out later, or yeah. I'll I'll probably just check out the Reddit thread where I'm sure somebody's yes. already done that work. Yeah. Uh, but we want to spend this show talking about Throne of Eldraine, which is also out today on Arena dun, dun, dun. and Magic: The <laughs> Gathering Online. And you can play it. You can play sealed. You can draft on Magic Online. You can yep. play standard. There's the play anything in standard mm -hmm. event, which I've already started testing some decks in, which is pretty fun. Uh, so we're gonna go through a bunch of cards. And let's start with uh, one of the more interesting cards in the set. Okay. Bartered Cow. Bartered Cow. Okay, so one of the things that we wanted to do was, like early, early on when we were uh, designing, what I realized was what made Throne of Eldraine different from something like Innistrad mm -hmm. was when you actually kind of analyze fairy tales, what you quickly realize is there's a lot of components to fairy tales, mm -hmm. many of which overlap. Okay. And that one of the funs of one of the fun parts of doing this was that you had the opportunity. If we made a lot of open-ended cards, we allowed you to do one of two things: either you could recreate the fairy tale, mm -hmm. where like I put you in charm sleep, and then I used True Love's Kiss to wake you up, and yeah. where you feel like ah, I've relived the fairy tale, or probably the more fun thing is where you mix and match the fairy tale components mm -hmm. and that you get, oh, well, yeah, instead of Cinderella taking the enchanted carriage, uh, I put Jack's cow in it. Yeah. You know, and that, that's sort of fun. So, Barter Cow started as a red card. Okay. Uh, started as a completely different card. So, it was a red card that said, when this enters the battlefield, give it to your opponent and they need to give you a non-land permanent that they have. Okay. So it forced you to so trade you the cow. Traded the cow. Okay. Right. Got and it. so the idea was you didn't get to pick what they gave you. Yeah. So the, no one's saying it'd be a great trade, mm -hmm. but it'd be something. And maybe if you, you know, if you can manipulate things, maybe it could be a really good trade. Yeah. Um, and then I also made a card that was an artifact called Magic Beans mm -hmm. that was in the set for a while. And so the dream was that your opponent had Magic Beans and you would and trade. The, and the you cow. trade it. Yeah. So that could could happen. Yeah. Or, you know, I trade my my cow for Pinocchio or something. You know. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so originally it was a red card, it exchanged things. Um, once they made food, they thought, they, they liked the idea of having the cow. Mm -hmm. um, the, my, my version of it went away, but uh, then they decided to tie into food. So the idea now is, oh, it's a cow, and you can get food from the cow, because it's, yeah. it's a cow. Yeah. Now, people asking, why isn't it ca a food ox? Um, because, oh, for example, yeah. yeah, ginger brood is a food golem. Yes. And the answer is, food is a artifact subtype. So the, the cow is not an artifact, so it can't have an artifact subtype. Yes. Now, if it's like robo cow, then it could be food ox, but yeah, it is Yeah, I saw not. a lot of people asking about that. Is yes. food a creature type? Is it a... It is not. Is, it, is, what confuses people, because it's on ginger brute, right. that they, oh, look, it's on ginger brute, but that doesn't make that doesn't make it a creature type. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an artifact creature, so... so your changelings are not also food. Correct. Fo okay. Changelings are not food. Okay. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Uh, so we're just gonna we're gonna take these in alphabetical order. Although that's... I have to write down artifact changeling. It's a new thing. Artifact change. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's all artifact types. Oh okay. boy. Oh boy. I'll, I'll write that down. <laughs> okay. Down. Ne next. <laughs> charmed sleep. You were just mentioned charmed sleep. Yeah. So yeah. One of the things that happens when you do a top down set uh -huh. is you make new cards. Mm -hmm. But sometimes what you do is you say, oh, does a card does a card exist that does this? Mm -hmm. And so we knew we wanted to do like. Um, I mean, Sleeping Beauty being the most famous, but Snow White also. I mean, yep. there's the idea of, of putting someone in a deep sleep. Yeah, um, is a, a, a recurring fairy tale thing. Yep. So we knew we wanted to do that, and claustrophobia did exactly what we wanted. Mm -hmm. It's like you lock down the creature; it doesn't untap until something comes along to affect it. Yeah. And otherwise, it's tapped. And sleeping being tapped made a lot of sense. Yep. And so we're like, oh, the only problem is it has the wrong name. So give it a right name, and, uh, and there you there go. You so it. charm sleep. Charm sleep. Uh, and also just happens to be one of the better blue commons in the set. Well, I mean, it's limited. It's, it's claustrophobic is good yeah. in limited. Yeah, so. it is. Uh, Charming Prince. Let's talk about that one. Oh, Charming Prince. So this was my, uh, so very, very early on, I came mm -hmm. up with the idea of taking Prince Charming mm -hmm. and making it into a prince that literally was a charm. That has, yeah, yes. op that has options. That has options, right? Yeah. Because so for those that don't know, back in Mirage many years ago, we made the very first charms. Yep. The idea was they were effects so small that you couldn't do one on a card, but by putting three options, it was enough to make a card out of. Mm -hmm. And then over the years, we've made 
two color charms, three color charms. We've just made lots and lots of charms. Mm -hmm. So the idea of making a prince that itself was a charm and then calling him Charming Prince, mm -hmm. I, I, the lover of puns, couldn't pass that by. Of course not. And so the original version of it, uh, he'd gain you life. Yep. He could destroy an enchantment, mm -hmm. and uh, you, he could put plus one, plus one counter on up to, like two creatures, I think, up to two creatures. Okay. Uh, so the idea was, look, if you're asleep, if Charm sleeps on you, he could come and wake you up because he's okay. been charming. Okay, yep. Um, he can marry you, and then both, you know, you, you both get you plus both one, plus counter. Plus, okay. you're, you're happier. Or, hey, just you live happy ever after. That's life gain. Life being happy, we, we've done sure. a lot. And so the idea was, oh, he, just, he does the things you expect. And because the character of, of a charming prince that's all over fairy tales, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yep. It's all becoming a running joke of, um, they're not all, I guess, called Prince Charming. But the idea of the dashing prince is something you see all yep. over. And so we loved that. I loved the card. It was a thing of beauty. It was, you know, <laughs> chef's kiss. It was wonderful. And then Guilds of Ravnica makes Night of Autumn. And Night of Autumn mm, was yeah. basically the card I had made uh, in, white, in white green. Yep. And so I was like, ah! So I tried to change it, but it had been carefully crafted by play design. Mm -hmm. They had made it during set design, and you know it, it was it was so close to being done that they couldn't change it. Yeah. So we went back and said, okay, so it had to be Charming Prince. It had to have a charm on it. And so I basically said a set design is, okay, here's the important thing is it's got to wake up the sleeping princess. Mm -hmm. And if you can convey happy ever after, that's awesome. And keep the charm. Keep the charm. Yeah. Um, so what happened is... Uh, they were able to keep the life on, and I think I think we had four life, went down to three life, um, and so they ended up doing the flickering to wake it up from charming sleep. Yeah, that's something white can do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm not sure why they put the scry on it, just like he knows stuff. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's it's a pretty. I mean, it gives you it gives you lots a lot of options. Right, and the it. whole point of the card was we wanted something that really gave you a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, why does why does he show up in all the fairy tales? Because he's very flexible. You know, yeah. you, you can use him. Yeah. So then, what happened was we made the card, and then when it went to naming, they changed it from Charming Prince to I think it was Royal Charmer. Okay. Um, because at the time they're like, oh, not everybody's a prince, and he doesn't yeah. qualify being a prince, and they, but for whatever reason they changed it. So I went um, to Jenna, who did the names, and I go, please, Jenna, this <laughs> is the most perfect name. You have to change it back. And she she took pity on me, and she changed it back. Mm. Um, that the, was the, nice the, of her. The, yeah. the name is, is just too good. So. It, it is too good. And uh, I will say, we gave this card to Reed Duke to yeah. preview. That was on purpose. Yes. We specifically <laughs> picked this. He's Reed Duke's a charming guy himself. Yep. And a prince prince of a man. And it is a very good card. So. It is a very good card. Yes. We've already seen people talking about it in modern. And oh, here's another little trivia. Yeah. Um, so we know in the set that Javier, the world champion, what, what card is he on? He's on... He's on uh, Fervent Champion. Fervent Champion. Yeah. For a while, he was on Charming Prince. Oh, Javier's um, a charming and, guy, and, too. And in fact, I believe there's an art that we have in that is Charming Prince with his face on it. Oh, really? Um, but for some reason, they ended up changing it. But for, for a little bit of time, Javier was going to be the Charming Prince. Oh. So, oh, interesting. Little, little, little trivia. Interesting. Uh, next up... Flaxen Intruder. So we used Ooh, this intruder. art a lot early yes. on in the set because yeah. it's very uh, you you see it right away. This is this is Goldilocks, yes. etc. Yeah. yeah, it's Goldilocks. <laughs> it, 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 she's flaxen. I mean, one of the things that we, so here was the challenge of dueling Goldilocks mm -hmm. is we early on we talked with the creative team about drawing a line. Yeah, uh, like what was in bounds, what was out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things so early on we made a card called Puss in Boots. Yep. Uh, which was a cat, you know, carrying a sword and a hat. And, yep. um, and then they said, you know what? We don't want talking animals. Like, mm -hmm. we don't mind having animals. They can be a little smarter than normal. They can have agency. Yeah. Meaning, like, if you told the duck to fetch you a key, it could fetch you the key. Yeah. You know, but it, we didn't want, they didn't want sort of animals talking or, or dressing up and acting like humans. Sure. And so we wanted to tell stuff like the, like Goldilocks. Yep. So how do you do that? Um, so one of the things was, okay, well, we could just, like, we had a card very early on. So what now is called Welcome Home. In the very, very early design, we had a card called Three Bears. Mm -hmm. The just, I think it was four GG, four green green, yeah. instead of five green green because it was an adventure. And it just went, make three bears. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that's straightforward. And, like, no one's saying they're talking bears. They're just three bears. But, yeah. but three bears means something. And you, you get some, it connects. And you go, okay, there's three bears. I got it. Mm -hmm. um, and then originally we had Goldilocks was just... I think we had her in red, and she just destroyed things because mm -hmm. um, we thought that was funny. That, that What do you know about Goldilocks? She destroys stuff. That's what yeah. she does. Um, but then when we were trying to do a creative on her, 
one of the things we wanted to do is put our own stamp on characters. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm not sure who came up with the idea of making her a bear hunter, mm -hmm. but I, I like that that's the thing I love about the set is we can take tropes you know, but spin them in ways that make some sort of magic zone. Because yeah. in no version of, of Goldilocks I've seen was she a bear hunter. So right. that that magic magic stamp on Goldilocks. Now, um, now you mentioned something in there that mm -hmm. the three bears, which is now Welcome Home, yeah. was originally just a, a sorcery. Yeah, just a sorcery. When uh, were adventures in the set to begin with? Did they come in later? How did that end so up? So what way? happened was when we handed off from Vision Design, adventures were not yet in the set. Okay. Um, most of the other parts of the set, most of the other themes in the set were there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the one big thing that got done. During, well, food did not yet exist. Food, okay. food tokens and um, adventures got made during set design. Okay. Um, we had had a, I'll, I'll talk about it some, but we had a, a precursor to food. Okay. Um, so the idea was... When we made the set, we had all these things that sort of dictated how you would build your deck. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of like, oh, I want to, like, I want to put these cards together in my deck. Yeah. But we didn't have a lot of in-game um, decision making. So when we handed over, we said, like, one of the things about Vision is we do as much work as we can in the time we've allotted, and then we hand over to set design. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and most of the time, we'll have most of the mechanics done. But sometimes, like, we kind of know there's a hole, and what we'll do is say, here's what we need, but you need you need to finish filling the hole. We haven't got to it yet. Mm -hmm. And so what we said is, we want something that cares about the, the battlefield in some way, and something that allows us to make sort of flavorful, fun cards. Yeah. Um, they tried a bunch of different things, I know. Um, Mark Gottlieb wrote a whole article about the evolution. If you want to go read it, it's on our website. Yep. He talks about sort of the beginning of adventure. There was another mechanic, by the way, we did for a while, which we, what do we call it? We called it quests, mm -hmm. where the way it worked is you had a card, and there were three different things you had to do on it, and if you, and you, you would mark when you did them. Yeah. And once all of them were done, then you could trade it in for an effect. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, you could trade them in for a token that mm -hmm. was kind of its own card. Like the five legendary equipment were originally this. Okay. Like you couldn't just get um, Embercleave. You had to earn Embercleave by going on a quest to get Embercleave. Yeah. Um, and we were not sure whether we wanted to do adventures or do quests. And we went back and forth. And yeah. for a while we were going to do adventures and quests. And, event and in the end, they were kind of too close in space. So we ended up adventures worked a little bit better. So we stuck with adventures. Um, I will point out that adventures can go on any permanent. We chose to only put them on creatures from a flavor standpoint. Yep. But for future adventuring, you, uh, could. you could put it on another permanence. It sure. works. Um, and then once they started putting that together, they realized that whenever you have two cards on a card, it lets you kind of tell a story. Mm -hmm. And so um, originally they were going to just do the adventures for the knights. Like it was going to be an Arthurian thing. Yeah. But they kept realizing how many fun fairy tale stuff they could do. Mm -hmm. And then the fairy tales kind of took it over just because like there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. Yeah. Um, and so we ended up, they, they, really what they did is they took oh, we have Goldilocks that destroys things, we have make a bear, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, well, the destroy artifacts could be green. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, we'll, we'll make that green, uh, and then they sort of married them together. Okay. So Now, you mentioned something there about the quest that triggered something yeah. in my head. So the card Happily Ever After kind of yes. reads like a quest. You have to have... Yes, I think it gone. was originally a quest. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, I mean... The, yeah, there was a point in time where one of the quests was happily ever after was a quest. Okay. And you had to you had to earn your happily ever after. I mean, it, that card still sort of does that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we liked it, so when we switched it over, we just sort of tweaked it into a more normal card. But yeah. it, I mean, that card right now uh, cares about end states rather than like the qu the way the quests work is do a thing. Oh, you've done it. Check yeah. it off. Where this is now, all these need to be true at the same it's time. It's like a threshold, right? Rather so than, it's a yeah. little bit different than how quests work. Yep. But yes, happily ever after at one point was a quest. Yeah. Oh, another thing about Happily Ever After, since this card's here. Yeah. Um, I made a little tiny comment. It's the things that blow out of proportion. Where I make a little <laughs> tiny comment about something. That never happens. And then people are like, build into this giant thing. One of the things that happened on this card is we have what we call the Council of Colors. Yep. Where we talk through what's appropriate for different colors. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we've been working on is um, Commander, both the colors white and red, the... The colors were were created for two color combat yeah. of twenty life, mm -hmm. and so there's some things that are a little wonky when you get into Commander. You have forty life, and it's multiplayer yep. and stuff. And so we've been looking to sort of expand a little bit red and white and find more things that red and white can do that we think maybe you'd want to do in Commander. Yeah. So Eric, when he was working on this card, Eric Lauer. Um, wanted to do, he needed to do some effect for everybody when it came out. Mm -hmm. And so giving everybody life, White can do that. He wanted to give everybody a card. Mm -hmm. And that's not something normally White does. So he came to the Council of Colors. And 
The idea we explored is maybe universal drawing could be something we give to White. Mm -hmm. White, you, one of White's weaknesses is it has trouble getting the answers it needs. It has, it has all the answers, but it doesn't always have access to all the answers. Mm -hmm. And so White is very inflexible in the sense that if White knows what's coming, it has the answers. But yeah. if it doesn't know, it, it doesn't have the flexibility. And so we've got to be careful with White's, White's card drawing. Yeah. But if everybody draws a card, yeah, yeah, you're drawing more answers, but your opponents are drawing more threats. Right. And so this is something new we're experimenting with. Okay. I will say it's very tiny in this card. Look, this card's a five color card, essentially. Yeah. So like, yeah, this is not something the average White player is going to play. This is for a very specific deck. Mm -hmm. My point was, we're experimenting with something that if we like it, we could put on more cards and something that might become something that White has more access to. Okay. But I think people misread my, we're experimenting with a tiny little thing into, there's a major thing we're doing that's going to change that's everything. One of the comments is, you yes. promised us an earth-shaking, game-changing effect on this card. That is not what I promised. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's like telephone. I, it's, I say, it happens. It, that's, so. It's like 10% of my job is, what did Mark say today? Yes. Um, next up, Ginger Brute. Oh, Ginger Brute. Yeah. Okay. So Ginger Brute was designed, so Peter Lee was my strong second on the set. Mm -hmm. And he designed Ginger Brute, I, for, I mean, it, it, exploratory design, first week of vision. I mean, really, really early. So the original Ginger Brute, I think, was a red, a red artifact creature mm -hmm. that had haste. And it said, uh, Ginger Brute can't be blocked except, except by creatures with haste. Yeah. Uh, so it, it wasn't activated at the time. It was just, I'm, you know, I'm the Gingerman Man. Uh, can't catch me. Can't, can't yeah, catch fast, me on the Gingerman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, chase me, chase me as fast as you can. You can't catch me on the Gingerman. Man. Somewhere in the things we said, we got there. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we made this card very early on, and like we made Puss in Boots very early on. Yeah. And, and the creative team was like, Puss in Boots, no. <laughs> and they're like, Gingerman Man, eh, maybe. Yeah. And we joked for a long time that that was the line. Mm -hmm. That was kind of like. Like, we didn't know what side of the line the Gingerbread Man was going to be on, but that right. was going to be the line. And we, we really liked Gingerbread Man. And so, um, so at one point, he went from being a red artifact creature. Then at one point, we had a mechanic where we had two alternate costs. Mm -hmm. So at some point, he was like, one R or three, yeah. where you could, you could spend either red mana and he was cheaper, or you could spend generic mana and he was not, a, not a, as a... A little more expensive. Yeah. Um, and then when the alternate costs went out of the set, he ended up becoming a artifact creature, a pure artifact creature. Mm -hmm. um, then at the end of Vision, we changed his ability to be activated just because it was a little bit too good. Okay. Um, not a lot of creatures have haste. Oh, the thing I do like about this is it makes haste work a little bit differently. Right. Normally, you don't care if, like, after the first turn, it doesn't matter that you have haste other mm -hmm. than someone stealing the creature. Yeah. Uh, but now, oh, I. He's attacking. Like, do, do I have a creature with haste? And suddenly, be... haste becomes a defensive thing. Right, haste is, yeah. matters, which is kind of cool. I, I, I like yeah. that about this card. Um, then, when they made food tokens later mm -hmm. on in set design, somebody said, "Hey, wait a minute, the ginger brute. He's, he's, he's food. food. Yeah. Uh, and so they, what they realize is, because he is an artifact, mm -hmm. he's allowed to have an artifact subtype. So they can make him a food golem, and then they put on the two sacrifice to yep. gain three life. So they put the food ability the food, on him, yep. and so." Anyway, it's a thing of beauty. Um, <laughs> it's probably my favorite card in the set. It is just from a, the one of the things that I, as a, the person who's in charge of design, I want to make sure that we're making cards that we can't make every set. Like, look, there's certain cards that we can put anywhere. Yeah. But when I make a card that can only go in the set I'm making, well, that's great because I, I'm not using that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And this is a perfect example. Like, you can't just put gingerbread anywhere. Yeah. Like, it makes sense here, but most other sets are like, what? what? But here it makes sense, so... This is, anyway, I like Ginger Brute a lot. Now, could we, you, you talked about that haste oh, mattering. Could we uh -huh. use that in the future again? Um, we or could. Or something like it. We could, we could. Um, I mean, I, I'm curious to see how people think about it. I mean, it, yeah. is, it is a tool that we have access to, that, and not just haste. Mm -hmm. we, we, the, the, the same technology of, oh, something is true if you have a certain quality. We can do yeah. that. The one other thing that I, I forgot, it's a great story, is the... The early, the first art that got turned in, mm -hmm. he had eyes. Um, and this is not what this person okay. did. Yeah. And we went back to the artist. I'm just he trying looked, to imagine it. With yes, eyes. he yeah. had eyes. He looked freaky. And we went back to the artist and we said, "Okay, instead of eyes, can you like just push? Like, imagine you push your thumbs to yeah. make indents for eyes." Uh, but anyway, it was a very, it's a very freaky looking. Uh, okay. I may have to man. go look that up after. Yeah, it's in, it's in Drake. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next up, still going in alphabetical order, let's okay. talk about Glass Casket. Ah, Glass Casket. Okay, so, so p one of the people asked me is, uh, are there any deep cuts here? Like, mm -hmm. you know, the hundred-handed one we did in uh, Theros, for example, yeah. where if you really know Greek mythology, you might know it, but if you don't, 
Um, and one of the things we found in general was we didn't need to go to the deep cuts because there were so many not deep cuts that people knew. Yeah. That fairy tales, what we learned is fairy tales, both people know them very well. The, the stat I used when I was selling the set is uh, an, the, uh, the, an, American, an American, when they die, on average, will have seen 10 different movies with the plot of Cinderella. Okay. That, that's how ingrained the story is. Like, mm -hmm. you've, you've just seen the story so many different times. Um, <coughs> but one of the things I learned when we were studying is um, one of the things that would happen in pop, in pop culture, Disney did this a lot, is they would borrow from other stories. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there is a Grimm's fairy tale called The Glass Casket. Mm -hmm. Now, it is not the story anybody knows. It's about a tailor, and he goes and rescues... I, some woman, I'm not, I'm not sure if she's a princess or something, sure. but she's not even asleep. She's just trapped somehow in a glass casket and he mm -hmm. frees her. Um, like she's trapped in a mountain in a glass casket. Um, but Walt Disney, when he was making Snow White, liked the imagery mm -hmm. of, the, of the glass casket. So he just borrowed it and he used it in Snow White. So now when people see glass casket, they go, oh, it's, it's a Snow White thing. And that's not where it came um, from. But it's not actually where it came from. It, it's its own story. Yeah. Um, so when we were making Glass Casket, once again, this was one of the colored artifacts that for a while was either or. Sure. Um, but we knew we wanted to make, we knew there was going to be a lot of artifacts in the set. Mm -hmm. And because of a lot of issues we've had with making artifact sets, Kamaga I mean, Kaladesh being the most recent, yeah. um, we've decided that we just have to make more colored artifacts. Mm -hmm. That's just a path we have to do to be able to make something that we can balance. Yeah. Um, and this set we knew wanted a lot of artifacts. It's a set, like, there's a lot of things in, yeah. in fairy tales. And so the glass casket made a lot of sense. We looked at the mechanics of it and we said, oh, well, what happens when you're putting the glass casket? Well, until someone frees you, you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. So we said, oh, well, let's make it like an oblivion ring. And so we took it and we put it in the set. And the idea is, okay, you use it, the thing goes away, and then someone breaks them out of it. Well, mm -hmm. then they come back. Yeah. Um, originally, it got any creature, and they later, for balance purposes, made it mana cost three or less. So yeah. the idea is, well, it's a smaller coffin. They, they got to fit in the coffin. <laughs> Um, and the other thing that's really interesting is when I, pre this is my social media preview, yeah. when I previewed this card, I got a lot of people sort of like, what's going on? This is an enchantment effect. That was going to be my next yeah. question. There was a lot of talk about that. Right. Typically, we've seen these kind of things on enchantments, so how did you guys draw that line? Well, the, here, so here's the idea. Mm -hmm. There's no, any ability that a color can do, any card type of that color can do. Sure. So for example, let's say white has flickering. Yep. Well, you can flicker on an instant, you can flicker on a sorcery, you can flicker on a planeswalker, you can mm -hmm. flicker on a creature, you can flicker on enchantment, you can flicker on an artifact if it's a white card. Mm -hmm. So the idea is there's no such thing as the Oblivion Ring ability is an enchantment thing. Sure. For starters, Banisher Priest does it on creatures all the time. Right. So like it's not even unique to enchantments. Yep. It also is done on creatures. So when people are like, well, you can't make an artifact, now red can blow it up. Well, when it's a creature, red can blow it up. You know. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is my job, and my, the team, the people that makes magic, yeah, yeah, yeah. our job is, look, we're going to make the same effect again and again and again and again. That's kind of magic. Mm -hmm. But we want to change it up. We want to do things that are a little different than last time. Maybe you have an artifact deck where the fact that this effect's on an artifact rather than an enchantment or a creature means something. Mm -hmm. And look, we've made this as an enchantment, you know, many, many times. We made it as a creature many, many times. Hey, and by the way, this is not even the first time we've done it as an artifact. Mm -hmm. Artifact is done before. It's cheaper than normal. Yep. And that's one of the advantages of doing colored artifacts is, you know, this was an artifact that wasn't color, you know, it was colorless. Uh, it would cost four or five, but mm -hmm. it gets to be white. So now we get to cost it like a white card. Mm -hmm. And so it lets us make something brand new that's flavorful and just bring something new to white in a, in a way that is kind of cool. White now has artifacts they get to do this in, mm -hmm. in addition. How, so how do you guys think about the difference between artifacts and enchantments? Well, okay, so one of the, the hidden secrets behind the scenes is they've never been that far apart. They've, yeah. they've never been. I mean, if you go back to Alpha... I think there are 15, 12 to 15 continuous artifacts in Alpha. Yep. So the idea of I sit there and I do something, artifacts have done that. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there's some subtle differences. Uh, artifacts tap. Enchantments can be auras. Artifacts can be equipment or vehicles. I mean, yeah. there's a little bit of difference in what they, they can do from some subtypes. Um, but generally speaking... There's not, I mean, there's not a lot of separation. And I understand that now that we're making colored uh, artifacts. Now, we've been doing this for 10 years. It's not a brand new thing. Right. Um, the very first colored artifact appeared in Future Sight. We then did them in New Phyrexia. We did them in Theros. We did them in um, Kaladesh. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've done them where they made sense. We're just upping the amount of time we do them. Yeah. Um, but yes, it... Mechanically speaking, we've moved them a little closer together than they were because the the mana was one of the big differences. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to do it. It's for the good of the game. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do think 
at first blush, it'll seem a little odd, but I, I, two, three years from now, no one's going to blink. Well, and, and the thing is, we've, we've literally, we've done this a lot of times in the past. Straight comes to mind is Winter Ormond Rising Waters. Yeah. These are two, if you're old like me, you know <laughs> what these cards are. Uh, Rising Waters was from Masks. Yeah. Winter Orb was from the very start yes. of the game. And they literally do the exact same yes. thing. Yeah. One's an artifact, one's an enchantment. Yeah. For a little while, I guess Winter Orb was a little different because you could turn, turn it, it off by tapped, tapping really, it, yeah. but that's not a rule anymore. Um, but yeah, we've been doing that for a while. So. Yeah, I mean, so like I said, I mean, I... We are trying, our job is to make magic as healthy as it can be, to make the game last as long as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what that means for enchantments and artifacts is there's really two differences now between them. Yep. One is they interact differently. Yep. Different things destroy them, different things positively interact with them. Mm -hmm. And there's a big flavor difference. And the one thing I think you'll see is we're really going to toe the line on enchantments aren't physical things. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, maybe there are things made of magic, maybe. Yeah. But even then, if, if, it's, if it's, like people asked about food, why is food an artifact enchantment? Why could it be an enchantment mm -hmm. counter? Like, why is it an artifact counter? Yeah. Um, and the reason is it's tangible. It's a thing. Yeah. You can make it or you can, you know, go in the forest and pick it. Yeah. It's a physical thing. And enchantments are like you have to use magic to make it. It is not something in which, or it's a, you know, it's a magical spell of some kind. It's not just a physical thing. And mm -hmm. so you're going to see a little more, I mean, we've tried to make the separation over time. I think the fact that we're pushing in this space just makes us a little more careful about that, especially on colored artifacts. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. Uh, so I just want to throw out there, we're about halfway through the list yeah, of cards right. we plan to talk to you. So make sure if you have questions for Mark, put them in chat. And what do you want to know? We will make sure to get to them mm -hmm. before the end of the show. Uh, but next up, you wanted to talk about Joust. Oh, Joust. Okay. So... One of the things that we do when we make uh, a set, like I talked about with, with Charm Sleep, mm -hmm. is we look for things that are already there. Yeah. So we made a list of things. Okay, um, not only did we do fairy tale things, we also did Arthurian things. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really, really, in the, the fairy tale part I've been trying to do forever. Mm -hmm. So when you hear me talk about it, I tend to get more excited about the fairy tale part. Right. And talk more about it. But a good chunk of the set, in fact, more than half the set was the Arthurian part. Yeah. The fairy tale. We made a lot, a lot of top down stuff, but there's only so much top down stuff we could do. And. Um, if you heard my metaphor, uh, that if, if the, the set was a cake, mm -hmm. that the fairy tale is the icing. Mm -hmm. It's sexy, it's bright, and may, maybe it makes you, you know, it, it's fun to look at. But yeah. the, the main part of the cake, the main part of the world building was on the Arthurian side. Right. Um, as um, Cynthia, who's the art director, likes to say, she wasn't going to make a race of Cinderella's, mm -hmm. you know. But we built the courts, the courts, we took the, the color pie. We always like to get the color pie and show the world through some element of the color pie. We did that with the courts. So the idea is each court... You know, white's about loyalty, and mm -hmm. blue's about knowledge, and black's about persistence, and red's about courage, and green's about strength. That each one sort of had a different virtue that looked for. So its knights cared about a certain different thing. Mm -hmm. And we were able to build them differently, and each court got its own sort of take on it. So anyway, one of the things we did early on was we wrote down all the tropes from Arthurian legend. And not just specific tropes like, you know, Excalibur, but knight tropes and stuff. Yeah. So one of the things we wrote down is jousting. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, that's easy. That, that's that's a slam dunk. We have a mechanic in the game called fight. Yeah, that is perfect. We'll just uh, so we just took a green card. We said okay, it's a fight spell. Oh, we want some knight tribal. We'll just say you're a little bit better if you, if you have a knight. And so we made this little like our our giant growth will be our not our fight card. Yep. Our prey upon in this set will just be joust, mm -hmm. and it'll be this green card, and everything's good. And then the creative team came back and they said, okay, one small problem: the green court isn't where the jousting happens. The red court. The red court's the fun court. They're mm -hmm. the ones that have all the feasts, and yeah. they play all the games, and they're all about courage, and they, they like fighting each other. And so they're like, well, the jousting's in the red court. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, okay. Well, luckily, luckily, fighting is secondary in red. Right. So we move this to red. Red doesn't always get a fight card. Mm -hmm. Green always like green always has a fight card. Red sometimes gets a fight card. Yep. Um, so we moved it into red. We changed it from like plus two to plus two plus one to make, yep. make it feel a little bit more red, and just shifted it over to red. But... This card for a long time was green until the creative team said that it's the red court, and then we, we shifted over to red. That makes sense. Uh, next up is a fan favorite. It's, believe it or not, of all the Reddit threads, Okay. we do look at these, uh, the one that was the most popular during preview season, Okay. Seven Dwarves. Ah, Seven Dwarves. Okay. So what happened was, when we first got the idea to do the set, mm -hmm. I said... I have a brilliant idea. The set's going to have exactly seven dwarves. Mm -hmm. And then the creative team came to me and they said, are you mad? 
Because uh, the problem How is... How often do they do that, though? <laughs> enough, but... Um, <laughs> so the, the problem with trying to do an exact number mm -hmm. is, A, we, we need some ability to change things. You know yep. Like, seven cards, especially in one color or two colors, would be a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And... So, like, that's a lot to ask. That's a lot of real estate to use up. And, look, things change, and, like, it's a lot to, it's a lot to ask. Yeah. And that, you know, if something changes in the set, once it's a, it's a dwarf, it's hard to change that. And so they, they're like... It, it and was the gag little, doesn't work if you have to go to six dwarves. Right, you can't have six or, dwarves. Yeah. Like, like, saying seven dwarves was a big commitment. Mm -hmm. And so they said, could you do the gag but without having actually seven dwarves? So mm -hmm. I said, okay, okay, how do I do seven dwarves? And... I, eventually, what, the idea that I came across was, okay, okay, um, how would you get seven of them in play if I can't have seven unique cards? And I'm like, well, what if you had seven of the same card? Okay, well, the problem there is Magic only lets you have four of a card. Yeah. But, but there's a mechanic that we use that, that we'll call Relentless, but yep. uh, is, well, we can just say you can have as many as you want. Oh, okay, but what if, like normally we say as many as you want, what if we gave you a number? Mm -hmm. And that one of the ways we could really hammer home seven is, well, you can have as many as you want up to seven. Yeah. You can have seven of these. And so we, we put that on. Uh, we tried a bunch of different things, but in the end, it's basically Plague Rat. We're like, can we beat Plague Rat? And they went, eh, no, we can't. So, I mean, it's better <laughs> than Plague Rat in that it's yep. one R. I mean, Plague Rat, you couldn't technically have multiples in your... I mean, when Plague Rat came out, when Richard made Plague Rat in Alpha, there were no deck limits. So Richard's right. intent was you can play as many Plague Rats as you want. Um, we later made Relentless Rats to actually do that. Yep. Um, but this is Plague Rat. It's one cheaper because mm -hmm. Plague Rat's kind of expensive. Um, but other than that, it's it's Plague Rat letting you have seven of them. I mean, it's just red Plague Rat. I mean, yeah. it's, it's flavored as a dwarf. And the art on this has all kinds of references to seven. There are yes. sevens of a yes. bunch of different things. There are seven dwarves for starters in there. Yes. Um, so people, one of the things online, by the way, is people yelled at me like, why aren't there seven pieces of art for the seven dwarves? So let me explain. Yes. Um, I mean, it's, it's not something we, well, logistically, the reason it's hard to do that is the way we print the, sh uh, the cards is they show up in sheets, and while there's more than one copy of a common, there are not seven copies of a common. Right. So if we wanted, uh, assuming we wanted to have seven unique pieces of art, like, it's, it's a big ask because all of a sudden, okay, now this card isn't showing up the same rate as the other commons, or mm -hmm. some common has to show up less often than, you know, it, it really makes you warp the sheet, and on top of that, you, you got to get seven art. There's a lot going on, and we, we have to say is, is that worth it? Is, is, right. is that gag worth the energy and the amount of... And sometimes we say yes, and sometimes we say no. Mm -hmm. And that just because something in it, like you think of it and go, ooh, that'd be fun, that doesn't necessarily mean in the end it's worth the aggravation. Yeah. And so that's why there's not seven pieces of art. I mean, we didn't put seven dwarves in the art, but I, I understand. I, I get the... It would have been cute if there were seven different pictures, but yeah. it, just, it was hard to do in, in a way that I don't think would have made the set better for doing it. So. Yeah. Uh, mechanically, one of my favorite things about this card, it, it's just, it's this weird rule that almost never comes up. Mm -hmm. But in Limited, there is no four card right. copy rule. You can just yes. play as many as you want. So if yes. you drafted eight of something, nine of something, yes. doesn't happen often. But yeah. if you did, you could play them. Except with this card. Yes. If you draft eight, seven dwarves, yes. eight, eight, seven dwarves, seven dwarves uh, you cannot play eight of them. You that can is correct. Only you can play only play up to seven. seven. Yes. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I love it, but it's weird. That's a quirky rule. So. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Spinning Wheel. Ah, okay, so Spinning Wheel is really interesting. Spinning Wheel was one of the first cards that made me realize um, the modularity of, of, um, of fairy tales. Yeah. So what happened was I made a long list, mm -hmm. so I got to Spinning Wheel, and then I'm like, oh, whoops. Do they mean the uh, the Sleeping Beauty syndrome? Like, so in uh, sorry, Sleeping Beauty, it's the spinning wheel that she her puts her finger Pricks and she her, puts yep. her to sleep. The whole everyone falls asleep. But also there's Rumpelstiltskin, mm -hmm. and Rumpelstiltskin is he comes and he, uses, he spins straw into gold. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, well, is it the spinning wheel that's the Sleeping Beauty spinning wheel, or is it the spinning wheel that is the Rumpelstiltskin spinning wheel? Mm -hmm. And then I said, oh, oh. Whoa, why can't it be both? Mm -hmm. And that's when I started realizing the overlap of stuff. That, that's when I first started realizing, oh, yeah, there's a big bad wolf in the Three Little Pigs, but there's also a big bad wolf in Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah. You know, Prince Charming. Like, there's a lot of overlap. That's where I started realizing this. So the cool thing about this card is it's referencing two different fairy tales. Mm -hmm. Now, originally, the first ability made a gold counter. Mm. Um, so before food was in the set, we had gold counters in the set. Yep. And the idea was uh, the, gold, the gilded goose... 
and spinning a wheel, things that made gold, yeah. literally would make a gold counter. Yep. And a gold counter, which we've made before, just you could sacrifice for any color. Yep. When we ended up making food tokens, they took gold tokens out of the set, so it just made this produce mana. The mm -hmm. idea is, it, the reason it taps the creature is it puts them to sleep, like yep. sleep at Sleeping Beauty. The reason it makes mana is it's making gold, which mm -hmm. is money, and money and magic is mana. Yeah. Um, so that that's what's going on with this card, which I'm, yeah. I'm very happy how it turned out. And, and by the way, it's, it's Me too. It's going to be a sealed game today. It's a good, it's a good card. <laughs> it's a good card. Uh, next up, Trapped in the Tower. Ah, okay. So, Rapunzel. So, we knew we wanted to do Rapunzel. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one of the things we did is we, we literally wrote down all the different fairy tales. And we didn't hit them all. We hit a lot of them. Um, so, the first version of this was can't attack. It can only block creatures with flying. Mm -hmm. That was the early version of it. So, the okay. idea is... I, you know, I, I can't attack you. I'm trapped in a tower. I can't block. Whoa! But I can block a flying creature. I'm up in the tower. I'm way up high. Yeah. Um, and it, everybody forgot that that you could block flyers. Like every once in a while, you'd attack with a flyer, and someone goes, "Oh, I block your flyer." Like what? Yeah. Uh, and so we ended up changing it. So now what it does is you can only equip it to creatures that don't have flying. The idea is, well, you can't trap. If Rapunzel can fly, it's very hard to trap her in a tower. Makes um, sense. And the other cool thing about this is, if you can make her fly, it it frees or. Her. Whatever creature is trapped in the tower, it frees the creature from being trapped in the tower. It'll yeah. fall off. Yeah. So one of the cool things about this card is normally jump effects or things that would grant flying don't like don't do this, but yeah. they get you out of the situation. So I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, next up, True Love's Kiss. You've mentioned this one a couple times already. Yes. Yes. So, okay. One of the questions I get about this card is, why isn't this red? So mm -hmm. I, I, often I talk about how red is the color of emotions, but we're, we're a combat game, and so yep. you see anger so much, and it's hard to show love in a, a game of combat. Yep. So we're like, you finally had something to show love. Why is it not red? Mm -hmm. And the answer is gameplay. So what happened was we made Charm Sleep, yep. and we knew, like, well, look, True Love's Kiss has to wake you up from Charm Sleep. Yep. Like, that's, that's the thing. And so what we did is we said, okay, um... That's an enchantment. We have to destroy enchantments. Mm -hmm. Red can't destroy enchantments. Right. And so we knew it needed to destroy enchantments. So the idea was it would destroy an enchantment, and then it would gain you, um, I think originally it gained you life. Okay. Uh, they ended up making it a cantrip just to make it a, a little bit better in, 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 in play design or set design. Sure. Um, so we made, originally it destroyed an enchantment, uh, but then we made Glass Casket, and we're like, we got, you got to be able to wake up still white. Like that, right. That's, you know... Um, and so we ended up making it uh, either an enchantment or an artifact. Okay. Um, then we made Frogify. Anyway, little by little, we kept making more things. Like, well, clearly, it has to work on that. So mm -hmm. one of the fun things about True Love's Kiss is not only is it a good universal answer, but there's so many, like, fairy tale problems that it answers for you. <laughs> it's like, are you put it asleep? You know, it can help you out. Are you turning into a frog? It can help you out. Yeah. Are you in a glass casket? Yeah, it can help you out. So <laughs> I really like that about it. Uh, and then the last card on our list, remember, okay. you've got questions, go ahead and put them in chat. They've grabbed a couple already. Mm -hmm. uh, Wicked Guardian. Okay, so uh, we're doing Cinderella. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, and it's not just Cinderella. In fact, there is a long, if you look at fairy tales, uh, step parents show up a lot in fairy tales. Yeah. And step parents are mean. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, for example, in Hansel and Gretel, uh, their father is married to another woman, and she's like, don't feed them, yeah. uh, you know, and the reason they're hungry is like their mother, uh, mother, their stepmother refuses to give them food. Yeah, stepmothers obviously, don't like feeding children. That's just, um, everybody knows that. Right, so obviously we wanted to play into this trope of sort of the mean step-parents. Yep. I mean, real step-parents aren't necessarily mean, I just, yeah. a, it's a fairy tale trope. Um, and so the idea is we wanted to play into this. So the original version of this card, I think what it said is... When it enters, oh, not when it enters the battlefield. Originally it was, target creature you control gets minus two, minus two, it'll end of turn. Wicked Guardian gets plus two, plus two, it'll end of turn. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like a shade variant. Mm -hmm. But the idea was, it only got power by weakening other things you controlled. Mm -hmm. um, it ended up being a little bit too good. I, it didn't quite work. Um, Gameplay-wise, it wasn't working out. But they liked the general flavor of, it's, it gets a benefit but from the pain of one of your other creatures. So the idea now is, it lets you draw a card, but you have to damage something of yourself to do it. And yeah. if it's big enough, okay, maybe it'll be okay. But if it's small enough, you might have to actually lose the creature. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I like how this turned out. So yeah. Now it's it's worth noting that you know the wicked stepmother yeah. trope that's yeah. in fairy tales. The actual story of Aldrain flipped yeah. that because yes, you have yes. Queen Linden, yes. who is. Uh, 
loving and right, caring yes, and yes, yes. raises their kids and they have yeah. a wonderful family mm -hmm. and that was really cool um, in Kate Elliott's yes, story. Yes. Um, check that out. It's an ebook that you can, it's called The Wildred Quest. Yes. Uh, very good book and yeah, it flips It, it flips a lot of yeah, those lot, fairy tale I mean, things on there. One of the things you'll see both in Kate's book and just in the set itself is mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun kind of playing with the tropes. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them are very recognizable but some we, we play around a little bit. Like, the cow, for example, we saw the bartered cow. Yeah. If you read the flavor text, that cow's got an additional story in our version of it. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's no normal cow. Mm -hmm. um, in our version, the, it's someone who uh, a fairy turned them into a cow. Right. And so no one, Jack's unaware that the cow isn't, is, is, is a person that's been turned into a cow. Yep. But the, the cow knows. So. Well, and then, <laughs> and then you go further in that story and some of the cards we show, yeah. Jack eats the beans instead of yeah. planting them. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's get to a few of these questions. Um, first, pretty easy one. Okay. What's your favorite card in the set? I said that earlier. Well, they they, they weren't paying attention. Uh, Ginger Brute is the card. I think that's favorite your favorite card. card I think it's my favorite card. Okay. I mean, it, it is, the thing that as a designer that I really care about is what is something that is flavorful and new, doing something maybe we haven't done before, and just mm -hmm. the total package is this amazing thing that sells the set, but we couldn't do it anywhere else. Yeah. And that card is just like, there's nowhere else you're doing Ginger Brute than, than this set. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, then we have a specific card question. Sean, mm -hmm. can you bring up the Great Henge? Uh, okay. They were asking where the design of the Great Henge uh, came from. Let me look at the Great Henge. The Great Henge is the green legendary artifact. I, I know, I know, yeah, but like yeah. the, it went through so yeah. many changes. I mean, we made, in Vision, we made versions of these. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things early on was the creative team was still trying to figure out uh, what things were. So let's see. The spell costs X plus the cast for X to the greatest power among creatures you control. Tap, add, green, green, you, add, you gain two life. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus of a counter on it and draw a card. Okay, so one of the things is each of the courts has a theme about the, the virtues that they care about. Mm -hmm. Green is about strength. Yeah. So green is more even more creature-centric than normal and more big creature than normal. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, we picked the things for the courts that the colors normally do. It's not like right. white's not about loyalty or anything. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It's just a little more so in this set. So I think the Great Henge, um, I think they were riffing off Stonehenge and they were trying to make something that uh, would help your creatures and make them bigger was the idea. Mm -hmm. um, but then they were, I guess the bi well, the idea is it's cheaper the bigger the creature you have because strength is its virtue. So the, mm -hmm. the more strength you have on the battlefield, the easier it is to cast this card. Yep. Um, and I know that the, the, the cycle of legendary artifacts, the court, right. uh, the court artifacts, went through a whole bunch of changes. For a while, they were part of the quests. They yep. weren't even in the set. Like you had to do the quest and then you got a token that was unique that like the token, you couldn't put the token in your deck. You had to earn the token through the quest. And it, 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 so these went through so many changes. Okay. People seem pretty happy with the way these, I, these I turned out. I think they turned yeah. out really well. Yeah. But like, like one thing to remember is we make stuff early on and then it goes through endless iteration. Mm -hmm. And so we did have the cycle of legendary artifacts for the courts. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. The, the green one went through some changes. Like we knew the blue one was Magic Mirror the whole time. Okay. That we decided that very early on. We knew the white one was going to be some version of the round table. Right. We knew the black was going to be the Holy Grail. And we knew the red was going to be Excalibur. Okay. But the green one was not. We, we bounced that around a whole bunch. So that okay. went through a bunch of changes. All right. Um, and then, Sean, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm not entirely sure about this question. Card turn to a pumpkin? Oh, turn to pumpkin. Turn to pumpkin. Yeah, this is, uh... Okay. Ah, so the, okay. the you may not know the answer to this okay. one, because it's just about the name. So this yes. is called turn into a pumpkin. Yeah. Why was this not just called turn to pumpkin? Ah, uh, that is way outside my area. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't, Mark doesn't do the names. Um, I, I, I... There are sets in which I have done names. Mm -hmm. I was in charge of the names for Odyssey way back when, and for both Unglued and Unhinged, I was basically in charge of the names. And then Unstable, I worked with Kelly, who was in charge of the names. Yeah. Um, so I, I have done names. Um, why turn into a pumpkin rather than turn to pumpkin? I don't know. Um, the other thing that's weird is the carriage clearly was a magical carriage, and then it goes back to being a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. So why isn't it turned back into a pumpkin? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, clearly, we're trying to turn... The, uh, I, I honestly don't know. This card was made long after I handed... It has food in it. So this yeah, was made it has long, food. long yeah. after I handed it over the set. I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. 
Um, next up, let's see. Uh, these are a couple questions for me. Okay. Um, when will the full art and all the variations yes. be in Gatherer? Um, they should be with the normal Gatherer update, uh, which is coming. But I don't want to give out a date and be wrong about that because I don't have it handy in front of me. But is there any article or anything that just shows all, all, all the alternate? So there, there are. There is one that yeah. just shows all of the alternate versions. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Throne of Eldraine Variants. Mm -hmm. So if you search, if honestly, if you Google or search our website mm -hmm. for just Throne of Eldraine Variants, you'll what you'll get is the uh, the. Just like our normal card image gallery, but mm -hmm. for all the different versions. And so that'll include uh, the showcase cards. It'll include all of the extended art. It'll include the borderless planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll also include the uh, the bundle promo and the buy a box promo. All right. So all the different versions. And we're going to keep doing that going forward yeah. so that people can see all the cool different and variations. I have seen showcase cards from upcoming sets. Yes. Because every set, by the way, the storybook frame that you're seeing right now, that is just for Throne of Eldraine. Mm -hmm. That is the Throne of Eldraine showcase cards. Each set is going to have its own um, show, uh, showcase, showcase, showcase frame. frame. Yeah. And there is some really awesome stuff coming. I, I'm not allowed to tell you anything about it, but um, I've been blown away. There, there are some really, really interesting things. Our, our creative team that, that does all the, the frames and stuff are... Mm -hmm. And the artists are just knocking it out. So I've, I've seen them too. They're yeah. they're amazing. Um, next up, uh, is it possible to get a rare or mythic alternate art this weekend in pre-release packs? Um, so pre-release packs have six normal boosters in them. Right. You cannot. They get, dra they're draft boosters. They're draft boosters. Yes. So you cannot get the extended. Right. So here, art, I, I, rare I, I, I can walk through yeah. this. I had yeah. to learn all this. So um, <laughs> basically, what's going on is the showcase cards. You can get foil or non-foil yep. in draft packs, with one exception. The non-foil commons of showcase cards are not there. Mm -hmm. That is a, a bug that it's no other set will that be true. Yep. That is true just for this one set. We were doing a lot of stuff. It was brand new. It was a kink we found late in the process. Mm -hmm. We understand it's annoying. We're, it, it's, it will get fixed in the future. Um, okay, so of showcase cards, you can get all the showcase cards and draft boosters, yep. with the exception of non-foil commons. Yep. Uh, extended art does not show up in draft boosters. Correct. You can only get extended art in the collector booster. Yep. Um, and then the borderless planeswalkers appears in both. Yes. You can get borderless planeswalkers, both foil and non-foil, in the draft booster and in I the collector booster. I saw them booster. at the employee pre-release. Yes. I lost to a foil extended art Oko, which Ooh. was <laughs> lovely to look at. Tough um, to play against. The uh, also, by the way, uh, in the collector boot, well. The, the extended art cards, which only show up in the collector boosters, do exist in both foil and non-foil. Mm -hmm. um, so in the collector boosters, you can get non-foil versions of them, and you can get foil versions of them. Yep. Uh, and they did ask, uh, they mean the date stamp promo. I think the answer is no. I think those are I don't right. know how they're doing the date stamp promo. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll look it up. I'll, I'll get Wizards. I, I don't believe there's any alternate. Well, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what they is, put the date stamp on, but yeah. yeah. I don't believe I there don't is, know. but I, we're going to double check I'm, I'm on that. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. Um, and then, do 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 do. Now we're getting some questions. Uh, to answer the, will there be an M Files article for Eldraine? Uh, I have not <coughs> received one yet. That doesn't mean there won't be. Uh, but we have not re yet received one. Um, now we have a question on Magic Mirror. Okay. Uh, and this one again. So uh, to delineate. What Mark does, yes. <laughs> cards will change further down the process, and it sounds like you weren't terribly involved in the design of the legendary artifacts. I mean, we we made a magic mirror. Yes. So what, one of the things that happens is we will make early versions of cards. Uh, Vision Design is making a template. Yeah. Kind of a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, we did make a rare cycle of legendary artifacts. Yep. And... Basically, what we're saying is, look, there needs to be this cycle there. This needs to be in the set. Mm -hmm. Now, they can completely change how they work. And we did label them. I, I don't know if the, the green one was the green one. I mean, yeah. Magic Mirror is Magic Mirror. We made a Magic Mirror. The Magic Mirror we made is not the Magic Mirror that's there. Yep. One of the things they do in set design is they keep trying to make things better and do other versions. And when they find a better version, they change to that version. Yep. So. Sometimes, like some of the stuff we made in Vision makes it all the way through, mm -hmm. like Charm Sleep, we made very early on, you know, and yeah. it didn't, I mean, it's, it's just, that's claustrophobia, and we called this all the way through. And there's other cards in the set, like, um, you know, True Love's Kiss, Ginger Brew, there's stuff that we did very early on, they got tweaked along the way, but didn't 
fundamentally change all that much. Yeah. But then there's something like Magic Mirror, where the Magic Mirror I made was, you know, or my team made. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if I made it. I mean, someone else on my team could have made it. But we made it in the set, and then we gave it to, to set design. But it radically changed. Yep. But if, you, if I can see it, I'll see what I um um. I'm just trying to remember what it does. It is it draws you cards. I think. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it does see. draw you cards. Spell costs one less for each instant sorcery in your graveyard. You have no ma no maximum hand size at the beginning of your upkeep. Put a knowledge counter on the Magic Mirror, then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the Magic Mirror. Okay, so one of the things that they seem to have changed over to is there's these things that make them cost less. I assume that's the theme yes. that runs through them. Yep. Um, that was added. That's in set design. And then, so what's going on here is the Magic Mirror uh, is in the blue court. The blue court's about knowledge. Mm -hmm. So clearly the reason the Magic Mirror is in the blue court is the Magic Mirror is all about knowledge. Yep. You learn things you don't know. We did our twist on it where it's not a little tiny mirror. It's a giant Super mirror. Super giant mirror, yep. We had to put a little guy there so you understand how big it is. Um, and then... Our version had you drawing some amount of cards, so I, I think this version, uh, it builds up over time, so it draws you more and more cards. I don't, mm -hmm. We didn't do that, but the version we had was like, look, it draws you cards on some way. Yeah. It's about knowledge. Yep. So. Makes sense. Uh, can a gingerbread man ignite a spark or receive one from a planeswalker? Okay. Um, technically speaking, artificially made creatures cannot hold a spark, meaning you cannot be born with a spark if you are artificially created. Yes. But Karn exists. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, Karn was not born with a spark. Karn got a spark uh, from Venser. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, could we ever have it? I mean, it's the the lore would, might allow that to happen, but it, it's not like the gingerbread man's going to go through great trauma and then uh, uh, spark one day. Yeah. Uh, something else would have to happen. Sure. But like I said, Karn, Karn is the sign that any artificial creature maybe one day could get a spark. All right. Um, last question, because we're just about out of time. Okay. Um, and I think it's a good one. Someone okay. else, a couple other people noted this online the other day. Uh, there's no hex proof in this set. Yes. Was that on purpose? Is that any sign of anything or just um, happenstance? I will say this. Um, hex proof is not a big pop popular among R&D. Mm -hmm. We've been looking to replace hex proof. Uh, the reason it's been taking so long is we haven't found a good, clean, easy answer to it. Yep. Um, there's two things going on. One is we brought back protection. Yep. Um, protection does some of what Hexproof did. So in some cases, as in this set, protection will be there. The other thing that you can see us messing around with is the idea of what we call frost armor, mm -hmm. which is it's you can target it, but it costs more to target. Or sometimes you can target it, but something happens to you if you target it. Mm -hmm. We're more messing in that space of, it's not that you can't target it, it's just there's a cost to target it. Either mm -hmm. literally it costs more, or something happens if you do target it. Yep. I, I think we're drifting in that direction. Hexproof isn't gone yet, yeah. just because it's not here. It's not been officially eliminated. I have Hexproof in upcoming sets. I don't know whether it'll stay there or not. But I will say, Hexproof is not... I mean, if you said to me in five years Hexproof is gone, I wouldn't blink. If I yeah. said two years it's gone, I wouldn't blink. Um, but I don't know, definitively know yet that it's gone. I mean, okay. It's not officially gone yet. Well, and we experimented a little bit with Hexproof from. Yes, and then we brought <laughs> protection back. <laughs> it's like, can we make Hexproof act like protection? And then yeah. we brought protection back. So. Yeah, fair enough. Well, thank you, everyone, for your questions and for joining us. Thank you, Mark, for all the stories and for answering questions. Uh, we will be, I will not be back next week, but Steve okay. is going to be back next week, and we're going to be talking actually about the Extra Life charity oh, and all cool. the things Very cool. that uh, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro are doing around it. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely tune in next week to see how you can participate to help raise money for Extra Life. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for joining us these, this week, and we will see you later. Bye. <laughs>